Good afternoon, good morning, good night, wherever you are, just good. It's Judge Dawson, and I normally come on after my court hearings to do question and answer. And then oftentimes I come on live because not only do I want to answer your questions, but there's a topic that I want to talk about. Um, and oftentimes these topics are inspired by what we encounter in this courtroom. So if you don't know, I am the judge of the East Cleveland Municipal Court. I've been on the bench for 10 years now. Actually, it may be year, no, year 11. It's been a, been a, a nice ride. So I've been here for two terms. And before that, I was a defense attorney handling everything from your traffic cases up to courts of, of appeals, the federal courts and things like that. So I had a wide range of experience the legal area, as well as in courts, right? And then even now as a judge, I've had the opportunity to not only have a wide variety of cases come before me, but the best part of being a judge is I have been able to pour into people. I've been able to enrich individuals' lives based on what I see here in the courtroom. So I've been able to see and experience real life examples of tragedies that could be avoided if people just knew how to navigate this legal system. I call it the legal matrix. And if you know anything about me, you know I wrote a book called The Legal Matrix. I wrote a book called The Cycle Breaker. Both of those books are available on my website, judgedawson.com. But that's not what I'm here for. Just giving you that information. What I want to talk to you about today falls in line with what I do once a week. Once a week, I put a video on my YouTube page that is aimed at giving you some type of leadership skills. I've been doing it for quite a while now because I have about maybe 80 videos up there, all free, all on how you can avoid negative interaction with the legal system or how you can simply be the absolute best you can be. So go to my YouTube page at Judge Dawson where you'll find that. And if you're not following me on Instagram or TikTok where I do all of these lives, please do. It's at Judge Dawson. And why do I ask you to follow me? It's because I'm trying to be the positive noise in your life. On social media, we have a lot of noise, a lot of it's entertaining, a lot of it's negative, a lot of the information on social media is actually misleading, but I want to be the voice of positivity. Now, hopefully you can hear me because they're doing some construction in an area that's not right in my room, but next to it. So here's what's important for me to tell you today. The title of this talk is, I think you missed. I think you missed. And let me tell you what I mean by that. In today's times, we have become way too comfortable with missing, period. Missing the mark, missing the shot, missing the opportunity, misinformation. We have become too comfortable with missing. And let me tell you where I'm going with this. So yesterday I was on social media. I put up some yoga posts and things like that and some of the positive posts that I try to put up every day. And then as I was scrolling, I saw a story about a judge, no, excuse me, a person who committed a rape of a 14-year-old young lady. So the man was the predator, the 14-year-old was the victim. That case was compared to a case where an African-American woman was charged with doing something illegal or improper in regard to voter registration. And the way that these two cases came together is because the cases were handled by the same prosecutor. Okay. The black woman was sentenced to six months in jail. The white male didn't get any jail time. All right. So again, that's the headline, right? 
black woman, six months in jail for voter registration or something like that. White man, no time in jail for alleged rape. But it wasn't enough just to give us those statistics. The tie-in was the person said it was handled by the same prosecutor. And to be totally transparent, it was put up by a guy named Sean King, who does a lot of information on the radio. He does information and posts on social media. I'm sure he is all over Instagram and TikTok and things like that, and maybe even um, Twitter. So Sean King put up these posts. And I must say, I respect Sean King and all the work that he does because he is a voice for justice. So again, I'm trying to avoid this, this drilling. Hopefully you can hear me. Sean King is a voice for justice. I believe that. But this story was another example of how he missed. And not only did he miss, his miss caused me to miss, which probably will cause you to miss. And what do I mean by that? We get so caught up and so easily misinformed. As mad as you want to be about a black woman getting six months in jail and a white male getting no jail time, if that one, if you get mad about that, which is acceptable, the problem that you have to understand is that the sentence, the white man to no jail time, the black woman is six months in jail, had nothing to do with the prosecutor. Do you understand that? He said... It was handled by the same district attorney. So to me, all respect to what he does, because I'm not on the front lines doing what he does. He purposefully misled you and me in order to get us racially charged and upset. And the problem with that is when you get individuals racially charged and upset, they begin to make decisions that are based on emotions and those decisions can ultimately cause more harm. I think you hear the drilling now. So I'm going to work around this drilling because we're trying to upgrade the area, right? But hopefully you understand my point. Sean King gave misinformation and that in misinformation caused me to be emotionally jarred. And the person who reposted it and reposted it and everybody's all upset and here we go once again, where we avoid the issues. We avoid the ability to have an actual conversation that can lead to change because we're too busy throwing around action words, triggers, race and all these things when it doesn't matter. And let me explain to you, I, I, you know, I love the opportunity for people to say, hey, you know what? Oh, thank you for that badge. That was beautiful. You know, people say, well, judge, you know, how can you say race doesn't matter? You know, are you are you looking out for your people? Do you care? Look, I am proud to be a judge. Absolutely. I'm proud to be an attorney and I'm just as proud to be a brother from the hood. No doubt about it. My experiences shaped how I rule on the bench. My experiences shaped how I conduct myself as a man. So I love and accept and embrace how I was raised. So you can't throw back at me. Well, you know, you don't care about your race and this and that because that's not it. I care so much about my race. I care so much about my people. I care so much about all people, white people, black people, that I don't want you to be duped or misinformed. So as much as we need people on the front lines like Sean King who are going to tell us what's going on, the things we don't know about, we also need you to be factual and thorough so not to try to emotionally charge me into thinking and acting in a way that will be harmful to my future. Because the more that you think that this justice system doesn't work for you, the more willing you will be to disrespect the system disrespect me as a judge and end up on the bad side of this argument. And that's what I don't want for you. So in this case where we were talking about the black woman got six months in jail, the white man didn't get no time in jail. First of all, it's important to know that the jail time that was sentenced, the black woman was sentenced to has been 
overturned and her case has to be re-reviewed. So that's one, right? He didn't tell us that. And that's fine. But the most important thing for you to understand about this legal system is that it does not matter that the DA handled the same case because we're not talking about the way it was prosecuted. We're talking about the disparage in the sentencing. Who does a sentencing of a convicted criminal? The judge. It's not the prosecutor. It's not the defense attorney. It's not the victim. It's the judge. So if you have a problem with a sentence that somebody received, your problem is with the judge in the court. And in this particular set of circumstances, there were two different judges. That's my point. Two different judges impose the sentence. So you cannot compare what one judge does to a white man in his courtroom and what another judge does to a black woman in his courtroom or her courtroom. You have to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges if we are ever going to get anywhere in this legal system and if we're going to ever get anywhere talking about fairness and justice. But as long as we're using trigger words to get us upset by talking about prosecutors, yeah, and absolutely right. Somebody put in here, yeah, prosecutors can be dirty. But again, though I appreciate that comment, you're missing my point. You're missing my point. And that is therein lies the problem. We allow our emotions to cause us to miss the point. The title of my talk is I think you missed again. I don't care how dirty the prosecutor is because they could be dirty. Police could be dirty and the defense attorney could be dirty. Right. What I'm saying is the we have to know the players and their role. The prosecutor does not impose a sentence. The judge does. So when you're mad that somebody got six months in jail and another person got no months in jail, the only person to look at is the judge. Why did the judge give two different people two different sentences? And in this case, it was two different judges who did it. Who knows? The one judge may not like black people. Let's just keep it real. You know, and that's why my first advice to everyone is to avoid this legal matrix. Man, avoid this legal matrix because you can't control who you get. Um, Susan, the Sean King, I believe it's with a um, U-A-N. I think it's spelled with a U-A-N. But if you... Um, do a hashtag search, you'll find him. And Sean King is a, is a cool guy. He, he's an activist. He is a person who is on top of everything that happens. Well, not everything, but a lot of things that happen in this country where race comes into play and it's unfair. And most importantly, he points out when it's unfair to black people. Yeah. So, but that's the key. Somebody said maybe the information was left out. And that is my point. We have to be responsible when we're dealing with people. You don't leave out information. You don't cause other people to miss or you don't give misinformation. Because now when I first read that and every I went to his page to see what he put up and the thousands of comments under his page, most of them started with shaking my head. Oh, my gosh. There we go. Look at this system. So you got at least a thousand people revved up on misinformation. That's all I'm saying. So I speak as a person who represents the legal system and I don't speak for the legal system because, like I said, every judge is different and I don't defend the legal system either. But I want you to know the facts about the system. And the fact is, regardless of the post that he put up saying the same DA handled the case, that is a non-factor for you. The factor is a judge gave a different sentence to two different people. And if you want to really know how to make change, you can vote for judges. In some places you vote for DAs, but definitely your mayor hires the DA. All right. 
I think this 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 work that they're doing under or behind me is not going to allow me to be great. But I'm not here to be great. I'm here to inform you. I'm here to give you information because I care about you. I'm here to just give you information that you can use. Look. Yeah, and I and somebody said, "Yeah, he probably did it for views and likes." And that could be, but that's why I'm I'm soft on saying that Sean King only did it for views and likes because I think he cares about justice. I really do. But all I'm saying is, don't get me revved up on some misinformation because when I read it, I was mad until I did the research. Until I did the research, I was mad. Once I did my own research, I said, oh, this is not right. And I need to talk to my people about it. All right. We were slaves during the Declaration of Independence, though we weren't too much in the mind to have the Constitution benefits. OK, so ladies and gentlemen. That's been only 15 minutes, but like I said, they're doing some type of work downstairs or around me, and I'm going to go ahead and sign off, and I'll probably come back and talk about that because that's a very important conversation. How do we move forward if we are stuck in misinformation? And that's about justice, leadership, success, and even your relationships. How do you move forward when you're stuck in misinformation? All right, we'll be talking soon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, follow me on Instagram and TikTok because I want to spread more positive information to as many people as I can. I want to make this a platform of knowledge. All right, that's what I want to do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, take care, be blessed. I will talk to you soon. Thank you, my TikTok friends. I'm going to tune or sign out. Love you all. Be great.